give me my comments and your opinion about this thing. I think now, more than ever, everyone should recognize that Democrats are not our friends. So I listened for the last three days to Democrats, Sam McKenzie, the Chisholm, the Parkinson, a trash bus of racists. I never had anybody call me a racist. Yeah. And for the last three days, all I have heard from them is how it's just the most racist place. Or a white, one of these white supremacists. Good Lord, we have to realize they are not our friends. They can smile, and that doesn't mean I can't be polite to them, but they are not our friends. Are they destroy the republic and the foundation of who we are for what we preserve. That is the reality where we are now. And if these last three days have not proven that, you need to find a new job. There's never been a more important time for us to be unified. There's 70 and 5 of us. Let them call their name of the names they're going to call them. We need to move forward. We need to pass the gun bill. We need to pass the pronoun bill, wherever Mark is. Man, we do not slow down because of their crap. We can't. The only way we move forward with some sort of unity is to call out what happened on the House floor the other night. Yes, sir. I feel like we were crying from dry about a couple of members. And Jody, I'm just going to say it here because you signed the letter. You straight up came to me and said you were 100% where I was. And you went on the House floor and you did the opposite. Man, you hung us out with dry. And I like you personally. This is not personal. And if Brian Terry was here, I'd say the same thing to him. This would have been bad anyway, but dear God, we were called, we brought the racism into it because you didn't stay with us. But I need to know, and I don't want to hear why I sh there wasn't a proponent or evidence or an attorney. I need to know why you flipped your vote at the last minute. You didn't let the end up with the forehand. Giving Johnny a 15 minute heads up doesn't cut it. And if Brian Terry is here, I want to hear from him too. I have to know. You're going to keep the staff out? This is the place to say it. I haven't bought anybody. Not one time. And it pisses me off to suggest that I have. And some of my friends in here suggest that I lied. And that's their friend. I walk in that room to vote. To dispel all three of them, just like all y'all. And the letter that I sent to the speaker, it says exactly what it's saying. Throw the book at it. Everything you've got. It doesn't say it was false. It's not in there. Plus, it doesn't matter. I'm yeah, great. Man. Plus, oh, my plus, my plus. Oh, I was great. I was walking in that room, man. Before we ever started on Jones, I got a list of questions from Johnny Garrett. Johnny said, if you're on the list that the speaker had to ask questions, Sat there through Jones, made notes. I went to Johnny and said, Johnny, can I go off script? Johnny says, yeah, go for it. The speaker never called me. We voted. I hit the green vote because that's what I'm there for. Then we get into the floor again. And immediately, the questions start coming up about the resolution. I know what she did. I know what she did broke the rules. And I know that she deserves to be expelled. We got to do it right. And that wasn't right. While this is going on, Reader came to my desk. He said, hey, think we're doing good? I said, no. We have them established with hey, Gino's had two cracks at her, and the only thing he's established is that she stood at the well. That's it. Didn't fix any of the problems with the resolution. He didn't establish that she'd been here 10 years or 12 years and knew that it was better than others did. Why are we still in session? We're trying to change bills. Why did you get gaveled out of order? Because the speaker had to get order. It was disorderly conduct and caused chaos in this whole thing. That line of questioning is exactly what I told the leader I needed to ask. Because we don't have it right now. He didn't sit there and say, you need to vote yes anyway. He didn't whip my vote. He walked off. He didn't go to the speaker. There's no speaker to call on him. So if you're all going to come all at me and single me out and only three of y'all call me this weekend to check on me, I'm going to defend myself. I told leadership what was going on. I told him I had problems. I had questions. I had a plan to fix it. When the question got called, I went to John here. John, do we have the vote? He said, well, nobody else changes their vote. We should be voting. Why are you not going to vote yes? The next point. Now I went back to my desk. I sat there and had my internal debate on what to do. Then the bell rings. I'm concerned that I'm going to vote yes on a resolution that I know is wrong. We didn't establish that she did all that other stuff. All we established is she walked in there and there. Much as I hate to get John Ray any credit or anything, the smart thing he said, cool seat's not been up here. Darren Jernigan in the back of the room says, we can't vote on a resolution that's poorly drafted. And he's right. It's more that we were screwing it up and put my name on something that I knew that was going to be in the annals of history was being wrong. No different than some Democrat is going to be on a jury for Donald Trump and folks to convict him, even though they know what are going to be the The resolution got copied and pasted. All they changed was their names. She didn't do the things that were in the resolution. I said, oh, great, Mr. Speaker, have you on the list? You said, yes. 
Do not walk away your desk, never agree with you. Well, no. I just thought you had some other questions that were going to build the case. I didn't mean like walk yeah. off without getting additional information. I didn't take it that you were going to watch dinner at that time, but I knew you had some questions. I mean, you know, to sign a letter can then, for the other 65 of us, all think it's the right thing. I get that you feel strong enough. I mean, at this point, do you feel strong that you did the right thing, or is there any party who feels one kind of bad about that the rest of us got hung out and drunk? 1,000% I did the right thing. I went back and watched it again. I watched the video. Bottom line, if you went into that chamber, we had a slim vote council. You went into that chamber, you wanted to get it. You straight up asked me, are you 100% where I am? And I said, I'm all three expelling no matter what. You said it was the same spot. It hung us out to dry. One vote. And if Terry was here, I'd do the same thing to him. We had the jury already. This obviously wasn't a trial. But I knew every single one of your vote counts. I knew that we did not have to convince you all. When you came up to me, about two minutes left, of Gloria's final closing, that we didn't do it. I was shocked, in my humble opinion, her by moving from her desk to the well without position, without being trained here, was enough for me to figure out how I was going to get home. Expulsion. So I was taken back. I was also taken back that you wanted to ask me questions because that would make sense. It's going to take some time for all of us to digest your reasoning to pierce. I wanted to tell them protesting from the middle of the well is a one way conversation. No legislation in the history of the world. Has ever been passed under protest. It's always a two way conversation. And that's been lost. And they reduced each and every one of us, including each and every one of our constituents, to sometimes a simple protest. And so that to me was paramount of what all three of them did by virtue of that simple walk from Gloria's desk in the middle of the well without that permission, really, regardless of what the resolution did say. But I think we do understand how important we all are when a Vote is like it was, and then you change. Surprise is one that's a difficult thing to deal with. There's going to have to be, I think, some time before there's probably some trust reestablished. If I would have known that I had to convince you all, I think Gino, I think Armour, I think others that we thought about that process would have been handled a whole lot differently. That would have held a surprise and not the shock because that uh, surprised me. But all of a sudden, we had to convince the member. After we get asked them so much of what they were on there. I've taken positions up here against leadership. If you believe Gloria's resolution was wrong, you have the right to file an amendment and go talk to leadership. I think the problem I'm having is if we don't stick together, if you don't believe we're at war for our vote, with all love and respect to you, you need a different job. The left wants Tennessee so bad because if they get us, the Southeast falls and it's game over for the Republic. This is not a neighborhood social gathering. We are fighting for the Republic of our country right now. And the world is staring at us. Are we going to stand our ground? I've got multiple phone calls from other representatives going, we sure hope you guys stand up because maybe you'll give us the courage to stand up and push back against what's going to destroy our republic. You should have told leadership ahead of time if you had it done. By God, when you change your mind, you should have been screaming in the speaker's ears on, I'm a no How does that affect your home? If Brian Terry was standing here, I would be telling Brian Terry, you should have went to the speaker and said, I'm changing my vote. And if you put it at 65, some of you would have taken you behind the dais and explain to you why this is an important vote. It would have given us the opportunity to not throw the rest of us under the bus. I've been called a racist, a misogynist, a white supremacist more in the last two months of my life than I had my entire life. By golly, I'm biting my tongue. But I'm telling you, Mr. Speaker, with all due respect, days are very thin right now. And I'm going to have to swallow this to see Mr. Jones back up here walking these hollow halls that the greats of Tennessee stood in and watched them disrespect this cup of the state that I chose to move to. By golly, it's got to stop. I'm sorry for getting angry here. My father was D Day plus four, and he fought for this freaking country, and many of his friends died. You got to do what's right. Even if you think it might be wrong, you got to do what's right. And you got to protect this freaking republic here in Tennessee. You know what? Let's all go to hell home. I'm getting freaking gray hair sitting here listening to this bullshit. I'm sorry. I apologize. I'm getting sick of this. Do the right thing for the people of Tennessee, and we'll come out smelling like a roach. Fight for the people of Tennessee.